All right, so here we are with day number 47, it seems. <laughs> it's probably day three, day four. And I'm getting ready to do the faux marble design on my countertop. So I have three paints here. They're all glidden and they're all flat and they're all samples because I don't feel like I need to buy a $25 or even a $10 jug of paint because I feel like these three will accomplish what I'm trying to do and each sample was like $250. The samples are all the same color and you tell them which color you want it tinted. So I told y'all how I painted this and it was gray and now that it has dried it looks black so I'm very pleased with that. Unfortunately I can see a little you know streak every now and again from where the paint either isn't thick enough or it bled the white under or the gray under bled through but that's okay because we're doing a design on it. So I wasn't going to do this step but after watching another video last night I decided to do this step. I have a piece of paper here and I'm going to figure out A exactly how I need to pat the design on and B what color what order of colors I want to do it in because of course if you do it in this color that's going to um, be up under these two colors which means that won't show up as much if you do that one first if you do that one first I mean you'll get a different kind of um, a different kind of countertop, a different kind of faux granite. You might have a brown base, you might have a cream base, you might have gold. I've seen people use glitter. So it just depends on what kind of granite you're going for. I'm not going to go through which colors I have because the paint tops are flipped upside down. So I don't want to do that. If I remember, if I can find out if it's even on the top label, I will um, insert it or put it in the description or something. But what I will say is... For the most part, you're going to go with a tan color, a chocolate color, and an off-white color. That's what I've seen throughout all the videos I've watched. So for the first thing, I'm going to, I got this sponge. It was a round loofah, and it was a dollar at Walmart, but it was in the section with the paint, not with the um, bath and body stuff. And I just ripped it. I didn't want to cut it because I didn't want it to be a sharp line. I'm going to dab it in my paint and I put it on a plate plate so I could dab the excess off because you don't want a glob of it. And I'm going to see which pattern I like more. That's starting with my cream first. I'm going to dab the chocolate. And I'm going to put chocolate on top of that. And then over here, I'm going to do chocolate by itself because, again, I'm trying to see what kind of pattern I want. And then for this one, I'm dabbing it, uh-oh, wiping off the excess. And I'm going to do this by itself over here. Then I'm going to go back, put this on the chocolate first. Then I'm going to go back and put it on the one that already has the chocolate with the uh, other lighter color. Then I'm going to go back with my chocolate because this is the only one without chocolate. I'm going to dab that on there to see how it looks. And then this is the only one without the lighter color. So I'm going to go and put that on there. And I'm going to let it dry a little bit to see which one I like the most. So those are my three options. They kind of look the same. Uh, you can tell that that has more chocolate. You can tell that that has more cream. And that just looks like a child's handprint that went wrong. <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to be going with that one. I think I'm liking this one because I want it to be more of a cream color. So we will find out and then we will come back with the final product. Ding, 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 ding. I think we have a winner. So this looks a little different because I went back and I put the whole third of the paper with that base, a whole third with the chocolate and a whole third with the cream. And so then I put chocolate after the cream and then I put the vanilla after the cream, the tan after the chocolate, the vanilla after the chocolate, the chocolate after the that one and then that one after that one if you understand what I'm saying. And then the third thing, the third paint on there so that I can see which one I like most. Now I'm going for a lighter kind of granite. 
So, darn it. So none of the top three is going to be my choice. It's going to be between that one and that one. And those look kind of similar, except I put less brown on there and more brown on there. So I think I'm going to go with this one. Ah, oh, Yes. Finally, listen, I was so scared. I cannot wait to show y'all the finished product. So this is the technique that I've decided upon. I'm taking the darker of the two light colors and I'm filling up my sponge with paint. Um, and then I'm dabbing it randomly. Okay. Ah, don't want to waste my paint. I'm dabbing it randomly. So there's a lot of paint in some spots. Then I'm going back in now that it's not a lot of paint on the sponge and I'm dabbing close. We don't really want too much black to show through. Okay. So now that I have that dabbed on, which, you know, this is just the little part. I'm taking the lighter color here and I'm not putting so much paint on it, but I'm doing the same thing. I spread them out because you don't want to go in a certain pattern. I'm also twisting and turning my sponge as I'm going so that it's not all, you know, uniform. So I'm twisting and turning my sponge as I'm going and I'm actually putting more paint on this. So for the sake of the video, I'm, I'm showing less, but ah, uh, you know what? If you wanted to really do this, you would really want to see what I'm doing. So let me go back in. This is what I was working on before. And this is how much paint I'm actually putting on there. A lot. Because I, I don't want to cover the black, but I don't want the black peeping through. Uh, when I was little, I used to love to watch Bob Ross videos. And one thing he would say during the quiet time when he was just painting is dab, 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 just dab, 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 blend, blend, blend. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. I'm dabbing and I'm blending, I'm blending and I'm dabbing. So one thing I do like that I'm doing is you see how right here you can see more black than you can see right here. I like that. That adds to the character of the faux granite. So, um... I'm doing the same thing with the lighter color. I'm going in randomly. And once it's less paint on the sponge, I'm going back over it. Dabbing it all around, but I'm not putting as much as I did of the first color. And one trick about doing the faux granite is layering on the product, which I'm going to show you when I do this vein. Now, I have this chocolate paint that I showed you guys earlier. I didn't really like it taking it out of the box. But now that I used it, I decided not to put it all over the counter. What I'm doing is making my veins with it. And I'm going from thicker to thinner. So I started out with this whole sponge. And I'm slowly lifting it as I go down. Some of them I connected, some of them I didn't. And don't forget to take this up the side too because the vein doesn't know where it stops. And so once I get it on there, I'm dabbing that to kind of try to blend it out. So once I'm finished with that, because that's kind of bold, right? I'm taking the lighter of the two light colors and dabbing it on there. Now I have some excess on here. I'm just gonna dab it right here because I still have to do that corner. So it's okay. So I'm going back over it. I don't want any harsh white lines, but I have come to find that this lighter color is also something you can marble with. And I'm gonna show you an example of how I did that shortly. So I went over it with that. Now I'm gonna take the darker of the light colors. I didn't load up my sponge. I hardly put anything on my sponge. I just picked it up and I'm gonna go back over 
that red and cream that I just did and dab it on there. Oh, I said red, but it's brown, but I've noticed it has a red tint to it. And I kind of covered it up. So you see how light that vein is? Here's one that I didn't actually cover. I stopped to start trying to record. And I'm just going back in, switching my sponges in and out, dabbing and blending. And I can always add more. One thing about doing arts and crafts when you're dealing with paint and colors, you can always add more, but it's hard to take some away. So here's another one that I did that I didn't quite blend out. And I'm just going in. This is the darker of the two. And blending it so if I step back this is what I've done so far and I like it now excuse my my sink that y'all are about to see because I've been painting for literally like four days three days so I hadn't been able to really wash dishes I'm just gonna cover the screen come over here uncover the screen so this is one part of my um countertop that I did. Now, if you pay attention up here, you see it's kind of black. One thing you want to do is make sure that you get inside of that crease and inside of that crease, which this one, that black that you see is really the tape. It's not actually the counter, but you're going to have to put your finger in there and really get into the cracks and the crevices. That is not tape. That is going to bother me, but I couldn't get in there the way that I wanted to get in there. There was a lady that I saw who took a pencil and stuck it into a piece of sponge and put it in there. I tried that. It didn't work for me. And I'm going to show you what happened when I did that. If you come over here, this is what happened. There was an influx of the cream colors, but it's not, it's not too terrible. I can deal with it, but stepping back is kind of, hmm. I don't know. It's kind of bothering me. It's kind of bothering me. And then another corner that I couldn't get into. This one is probably my favorite part of the counter. And I had to do a lot of going back over. I might go back over and do these areas with a little more of the cream color. And this is the first section that I did. I did not like it because on this section, I actually did brown over everything. And I did not like it. So I went back with more cream colored paint and I put more on top of the brown and then I highlighted these veins. So like right here, I need to go back and add some of the lighter cream color because you can see where it was added on. So I have to go back and do that. But if you notice, where can I find a spot? Like right here, that is cream color that I used to highlight. If you can see that vein, I made a vein out of the cream color. So this is where I am so far. Of course, when it dries, I have to go back and add the polyurethane on it, which will give it the shine. And that will be our deciding factor on if you should do this to your countertops. Just a little sidebar. You want to make sure that while you're dabbing, you don't accidentally pull. Because if you pull, it's going to be a streak and you don't want streaks. And once you put the paint on there, Dabbing will kill all of those harsh lines. You don't want harsh lines. You don't want um, you don't want to see the streaks. If you do accidentally streak, you can just dab it to blend it out. So it's all about blending. Like right here, I had some problems. You see, I'm trying to get in the crack. So I'm going to have to go over that with the darker color and just dab it. And once you go over it with the darker color, I have been going back over it with the lighter color again to blend it into the rest. So just be careful as you go through that you're dabbing and you're dabbing, you know, quickly and not accidentally pulling. So I got to thinking about it and I just couldn't stand these black corners. So what I have my son doing is he's... I am pulling the tape down, but he's taking a regular cleaning sponge and he's going into the corners, into the cracks. So this is what it was looking like. And this is what I've done so far. I'm trying to really just get into the cracks and crevices so that you don't see as much black because I started to think maybe that's not as much tape as I thought it was that was showing black. So 
we shall see how it turns out. And of course, I'll go over it with the lighter color with the other side of the sponge and just see what happens. All right, guys, we are in the final steps of the faux granite. So this is how it turned out. This is one counter. And we're going in with the polycrylic, which is the um, polyurethane that makes it shine. But notice it is water-based. Water-based means food grade. If you get the oil base, that's not safe for you and your food on your countertops, but the water base is. So that's what we're using. I have a sponge brush here that I'm going to use to get in the cracks and crevices. And I'm going to see how it rolls on. I'm going to try it with the roller so that it doesn't take all day. So one thing that I have seen people do is take their roller and roll tape around it so that it pulls off all the lint. So I'm going to try that. This is the really cheap foam brush. I don't feel like it has a lot of lint on it, but I'm going to try it just to be safe. Just so that I don't have any issues or regrets later. The polycrylic, um, it says on the package to let it dry for two hours and then sand it and then put on another layer and that's it. And if you want to do another layer, you would sand it again. And however many layers you wanna do, you would sand it until you have your top layer. So I have rolled up, taped up my tape. Yeah, I can't even talk. I have taped up my roller and I'm just kind of squeezing it to make sure it adheres. And then I'm gonna peel it off. All done, all easy. So now, before I, uh oh, sorry, before I actually roll it on there or pour it on there, I don't know what consistency this stuff is. So I'm going to take a little bit and I'm going to try it at the top. It's not bad. It's a little thin. It is. So I'm going to. Pour it on the counter. I don't suggest that you do that, but I just did. And I'm gonna roll it on there. I will say that from what I've seen people do, you wanna make sure that you, you see how I'm going back and forth? I don't think that's how you're supposed to do it. Roll it down, pick it up, go over, the first line, pick it up and keep going until you've done everything so that you don't have any lines afterwards. So I'm going to finish up these counters and I will come back and we will see how glossy it is. Right now, I don't see a difference between the two that has the product on there. Right there does not. So we'll see. So this is the finished product and I like it. However, comma it's not shiny it's not shiny like the granite usually is i put two coats of the um polycrylic and i just thought it was going to be shinier i still hadn't put my stuff back on my um countertops because it says it needs to dry for 24 hours even though it's dry to the touch it says it needs to dry for 20 for i'm sorry like eight hours before light use and then 24 hours before heavy use. And if you notice up here, I took the tape off and that's the part I don't like. I ended up having to score it. I took a knife and just cut where the tape was and then pulled the tape up because if you notice, let's see, right along here, boom. A, it pulled the paint from my wall. So now I feel like I need to do a backsplash. But as you go down, the paint um, seep through there. And then around this corner, boom, the problem.
when I pulled the tape up, it pulled up some of the black paint with it. The gray paint is still there, but the black paint came up with it along with what's on top of the black paint, which is the cream, chocolate, and vanilla colors. So I'm going to have to go back in and touch that up. That kind of upset me. And that happened a few times, but then part of it, I think, was because I let my son rip it up and he's 11. And if you have an 11 year old son, you know, sometimes they're reckless. Of course, they're not going to do things the way that uh, adults would do it, the children, but it's okay. I'm going to have to go back and fix it. Also, I want you to note that when you go and lay your polycrylic into the creases, you don't want it to pull there. What I ended up doing was taking my sponge brush and dotting it along here and dotting it along here. And then I will pull it down, scoop it and go up and then come across so that there's no rundown. Also, you want to make sure that there's no rundown right here because I took my roller, I did roll it and I rolled across, but you have to make sure that this doesn't fall this way and that what you roll doesn't goop up right here and end up dripping off the side. So I think that soon I will be going back and um, adding a shinier coat. I think I'm just kind of over this project as far as trying to fix it right now because today is Friday and I've been working on this since Monday just because of all the layers you have to put on the drying time and everything like that. So these are my faux granite countertops for you. And I still have a mess to clean up because my pots and pans are still on the floor. My, you know, coffee maker and all that stuff is still on the floor. So I do have a mess to clean up, but these are my faux granite countertops. Thank you for watching.